This is a brief video on the lumbar plexus. As you can see here, the lumbar plexus is made up of lumbar nerves L1 to L4 mainly, mainly these four that I'm highlighting out here. We're going to be talking about what these nerves innervate, including the muscles and some problems with the muscles and other diseases of those muscles, as well as how a patient might present with issues of the lumbar plexus. Let's begin at the top here with the ilioinguinal nerve. This nerve is a sensory nerve that comes mostly from L1. And it's important to note that these are the ventral rami of the lumbar or of the of the lumbar nerves. So ilioinguinal nerve L1 sensation. It traverses through the inguinal canal to uh, provide sensory innervation to the scrotum in men and the labia majora in females. Next up is the genitofemoral nerve, which comes from L1 and L2. General, genitofemoral nerve, as the name implies, has two branches, the genital branch and the femoral branch. The genital branch also courses through the inguinal canal to provide sensation to the scrotum and the labia majora, where the femoral branch goes under the inguinal ligament and provides sensation to an area on the proximal anterior thigh, small patch of skin on the proximal anterior thigh. Uh, sensation is innervated by the genital, or excuse me, the femoral branch of the genitofemoral nerve. Next up is the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. This comes from nerve roots L2 and L3, and this one courses beneath the inguinal ligament. This provides sensation to the anterolateral thigh. And uh, when this nerve is entrapped, when the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve is entrapped or pinched, uh, it can cause burning pain or paresthesias, which is like a pins and needles sensation to the outer thigh, to this area, to the anterolateral thigh. This is called neuralgia, uh, and that's worth knowing in association with um, a couple nerves, including the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. <laughs> Next up is a big one, the femoral nerve, comes from nerve roots L2 to L4. Um, these two branches coming out of it here are the psoas and the iliacus branches. But this big one right here is the femoral nerve. Um, this, this one does quite a bit. Firstly, it passes beneath the inguinal ligament through the femoral triangle. Uh, it's worth looking at a, at a picture of the pelvis and, and understanding where those structures are to innervate the anterior compartment of the thigh. Now there's a lot going on here. Uh, we have hip flexors and knee extensors here. Um, and all of them are at least partially innervated by the femoral nerve, this big branch coming out of the lumbar plexus. So hip flexors that are innervated by the femoral nerve are the pectineus, the sartorius, the psoas major, and the iliacus, which combine to form the iliopsoas. Uh, this is a large muscle that is the chief hip flexor uh, in, the, in the lower limb. And this muscle goes deep to the inguinal ligament. Um, it, it goes through the, to, excuse me, it, goes, it, it, it attaches to the lesser trochanter of the hip. So this is a very strong hip flexor, and it also has the minor job of uh, laterally rotating the hip as well. So pectineus, sartorius, and the iliopsoas are innervated by the femoral nerve. In addition, some knee extensors, particularly the quadriceps, the vestus, or excuse me, the quadriceps, uh, including the four muscles or the four parts of the quadriceps is also innervated by the femoral nerve. The four parts of the quadriceps are the rectus femoris, the vastus medialis, the vastus lateralis, and the vastus intermedius. Uh, these quadriceps all insert into the patellar tendon, they continue as the patellar tendon, uh, and they attach to the tibial tuberosity. So, and they all function to extend the knee. Uh, vastus medialis is special because a branch of that muscle goes through the adductor uh, canal, and uh, these four are worth knowing as being innervated by L2 to L4 of the femoral nerve. Now, the femoral nerve is pretty big. It continues after innervating all those muscles as the saphenous and vastus medialis branches through the adductor canal. So it 
uh, it, it continues here. This, this might be more helpful. It continues as the saphenous nerve, which is a long sensory nerve that goes down to the foot, uh, the longest sensory nerve in the body. And the saphenous branch, as well as the branch that goes through the vastus medialis, go through the adductor canal, as we mentioned here. So large femoral nerve, pieces of that nerve go through the adductor canal along with the femoral vein and along with the femoral artery. Uh, lots of things, go, four things go through the adductor canal. Femoral vein, femoral artery, the branch of the femoral nerve going to the vastus medius and the branch of the femoral nerve uh, that becomes the saphenous. When you have a femoral neck fracture, also called a hip fracture, the patient presents with a leg that is shortened and laterally rotated. This is because of the action of the femoral nerve on the iliopsoas muscle. The iliopsoas pulls that leg up, it's a hip flexor, and it also laterally rotates that leg. Uh, so a hip fracture presents the way it does, uh, that is, presents with a shortened leg and a laterally rotated leg because of the iliopsoas muscle. So uh, that's slightly relevant to uh, the femoral nerve innervating the iliopsoas in the anterior thigh. Femoral nerve also innervates the sartorius, which is a long, thin hip AB ductor. It's also a hip external rotator and a hip flexor. Uh, we had that mentioned here. We're repeating it again here. Um, you'll see why in a second. Femoral nerve also innervates the pectineus, which flexes and AD ducts the hip. Obturator nerve uh, also comes from L2 to L4, also innervates the pectineus, which flexes and AD ducts the hip. Obturator nerve coursing through the obturator canal also innervates the gracilis, which is a long, thin hip AD ductor, and it's often used in muscle grafts. This one has a long tendon, um, and it's kind of an accessory muscle. It's not, it's not super necessary for movement to the leg, uh, so surgeons often take it out and use it for muscle grafts. So gracilis can be used for grafts. The insertion point of the sartorius and the gracilis is uh, at the pes esurinus, which is a literal translation of goose foot. The um, insertion points of these two muscles ends up looking like a goose foot, and that's worth knowing as well. The obturator nerve through the obturator canal also innervates the medial thigh compartment, which consists of many hip AD ductors. Uh, these are the adductor longus, adductor brevis, the gracilis, and the adductor magnus. Um, this is kind of a technicality, but a small portion of the adductor magnus is not innervated by the obturator nerve. Um, this is the hamstring portion. That's not super important here. Uh, the obturator nerve through the obturator canal also innervates the obturator externus, which is a lateral hip rotator. And uh, we have a hole in the adductor magnus, an opening called the adductor hiatus, and the femoral artery and femoral nerve pass through this adductor magnus. It's a pretty big muscle. Um, so there's a hiatus in it. So after the obturator nerve innervates many of those medial thigh muscles, uh, it does go on to provide sensation to the medial thigh region. Uh, this is the anterior branch of the obturator nerve. And lastly, we have uh, parts of L4 and L5 that go down to the sacral plexus. So this has been the lumbar plexus directly below it and sometimes considered directly with it is the sacral plexus. Uh, there's a connection between the, lumbo, the lumbar plexus and the sacral plexus, and that comes from L4 and L5, which go down to the sacral nerves. So this has been a brief video on the lumbar plexus and some relevant muscles and problems with those muscles, diseases uh, that, that are all derivatives of the lumbar plexus. I hope this was helpful and thank you for listening.